Change has been the norm in enterprise data networking over the last 10 years. Bandwidth requirements have increased by orders of magnitude. The numbers and types of devices connected also jumped dramatically, and traffic patterns shifted to be more centralized and cloud-based. And it's all happened in an economic environment that's given IT less to spend. And yet, costly work group switch-based LAN architectures are still being built the same way. Isn't it time for IT organizations to focus on these new requirements and seek innovative, cost-effective solutions at the enterprise edge? The enterprise networking market is going through a lot of very significant changes these days. At a technical level, almost every part of the architecture is being rethought as IT architectures affect how we think about the network infrastructure. From the access layer, through WAN architectures, through data center networking, we're seeing a lot of innovation across all of these areas. The other significant shift we're seeing is looking at sort of vendor dynamics and the increasing competitive marketplace. So now we're actually starting to see a return to best practices in terms of how enterprises are evaluating technology, the fact that they're looking at a short list of vendors and looking at a much more competitive environment. Finally, the last thing we're seeing is that enterprises seem to be willing to abandon some of the assumptions they used to make and start to look at alternatives, alternative vendors as we mentioned, but also alternative technologies. They're really returning to an era where they're focused on their requirements, working through an evaluation and selecting the right technology and right vendors to solve their problems. We're starting to see a number of technologies come onto the enterprise radar really due to the fact that IT architectures are changing and therefore the network architecture has to adapt with it. If we think of the evolution of network technology, it's always aligned very closely with advances within broader IT architectures. So for example, the advent of the router and switch business really was a response to the advent of PCs, client server computing, and departmental and distributed servers. If we look at our IT architecture today, it's the exact opposite. In fact, we centralized all of these compute resources either into our data centers or increasingly back out to the cloud. And so this idea of putting increasing numbers of features and intelligence at the edge of our local area network may not make as much sense anymore. So we're starting to see an alternative emerge where we can centralize some of these features back to key throttle points as opposed to putting all these features on every single access port within our network architecture. We really see that there's two different instantiations of this technology that really illustrate this point. The first one is pretty well understood and deployed, and it's our wi wireless LAN architectures that we use today. So if we think about this, we have relatively dumb, you know, non-intelligent access points that feed up into centralized controllers that provide all the intelligence and functionality for our wireless LAN architectures. A second approach that we're seeing is passive optical LANs, where again, we're using passive technology down to the desktop and centralizing the, a lot of the intelligence at the aggregation or core layers within our architecture. So both of these architectures simplify the edge of the network technology and consolidate functionality intelligence at key throttle points within the architecture. When we look at some of the alternative technologies like passive optical LANs, we're really starting to see an interest in the marketplace. And there's different data points that really illustrate this. The first one is the increased number of calls that we get through our inquiry process at Gartner. So from a technology which really just hit the radar screen of organizations a couple of years ago, we're now seeing a steady stream of inquiries about the technology. We're also seeing it adopted in some fairly substantial networks and mission critical networks as time goes on. The other aspect in terms of data points is that passive optical LANs really fit 
an evolution of technology as we talked about. This idea of centralizing compute and IT resources goes hand in hand with simplifying the LAN edge and consolidating and centralizing some of the network functionality. So there's a very good fit from a technology evolution perspective. The third data point I would suggest is the fact that we're now starting to see a number of vendors enter the passive optical LAN marketplace. And so we're starting to see a competitive, vibrant marketplace around passive optical LANs. And then finally, if you look at our hype cycle evolution, the passive optical LAN technology has certainly moved forward from our enterprise and communications hype cycle that we have every year. And we're now projecting that it will hit the plateau of adoption within two to five years. So from a very nascent technology a couple of years ago, we now see a path towards more mainstream adoption as we look forward. I think we're really seeing three primary drivers to th rethink about how we build our network architectures. The first one is one that we've already touched on, which is the technical requirements and really focusing in what business problems you're trying to solve and translate that into a technical area. So really my shorthand for this would be really looking at functional requirements and how they better your business processes. The second area that we're seeing is really looking at the economic and financial constraints that we have these days. Clearly the economic environment has forced enterprises to rethink their procurement and evaluation protocols. And now we really have to think about answering questions about what business problems is it solving? Do we need to buy it now? Who are we buying it from? What are the specifics of the technology? Have we done a competitive evaluation? And so on. So, I really look at this as a return to scrutiny in terms of the process. And then finally, the third area where we're starting to see more attention paid to is operational. And so we really have to find ways of simplifying our network architectures, really reducing our OPEX, both in terms of reducing labor and the associated costs with running our networks over the long term. So far to sum this up, it's really these three areas functional, financial, and operations, which is really driving a lot of the change in the marketplace today. So we're really returning to these best practices to help us build a network architecture to solve our business process issues and run our applications on top of. We're certainly seeing green IT and energy considerations play a bigger role within IT decision making. This clearly started within the data center, but is now becoming a broader topic of discussion across all of the IT architecture and into our network technologies. When we start looking at the different kinds of technology, we really believe that green IT and energy should be thought of as part of the overall operational evaluations and context because as a recurring cost, it really impacts our operational costs over the long term. From a network perspective, we really see a very broad range of power requirements for different types of access technologies. And we're encouraging organizations to start thinking about evaluating the energy consumption of their networking equipment as part of the operational costs and as part of their key decision criteria as they embark on new technologies. I think there are three key takeaways for network architects as they think about moving their network architecture forward. The first one is stop making assumptions. And so rather than assuming network architectures, technologies, products, and vendor relationships, they really need to take a step back. We find that most of the mistakes that enterprises make around network architecture are because of these assumptions rather than focused on business requirements. The second key takeaway is, in fact, focusing on those business requirements. We don't build networks for the fun of building networks, but rather to support business processes and applications. And so we really need to look at a broader IT perspective and understand how our IT architectures and applications are shifting over time and make sure the network architecture adapts to that. New technologies that we find in our hype cycles like passive optical LAN really do support some of these changing IT architectures. So it's worthwhile taking a look at some of these emerging technologies. 
Finally, we really have to take advantage of the heightened innovation that we find in the marketplace as well as the heightened competition. So we're seeing more innovation across all major areas of network technology than we've seen in many years. And this is accompanied by some heightened competition across many factors of the networking architecture and marketplace. And this can really benefit enterprises as they move their network architectures forward and really find that alignment with their IT infrastructure.